I never thought that a question on even a quadratic equation can be this tricky. We have a quadratic equation x squared plus the square root of 6 times x plus 3 equals 0, whose roots are a and b. We are asked to find the value of a raised to 37 plus b raised to power 37 plus a raised to 26 plus b raised to 26 divided by a raised to 29 plus b raised to power 29 plus a raised to the 18th power plus b raised to the 18th power. So, can you solve it? In the first level, which is level 1 thinking order, we will use 20% of our brain, where as soon as we see a quadratic equation, the very first thing that comes to our mind is finding the values of the roots. I will not bore you by solving this quadratic equation. The roots of this equation will be a equals this and b equals this. Then we will think, now let us substitute the values of a and b into the given expression, calculate each power, and then finally add or divide as asked. But soon enough, we will realize that we are in trouble because calculating such high powers directly is not going to be simple. And if you think otherwise, then I wish you good luck with expanding all of that. So we will now start thinking a bit, and by using 60% of our brain, we will enter level 2 thinking order. Here we will try to find a pattern. This is where we use a method based on recurrence relations. We define a new term, say S with subscript N, which stands for A raised to N plus B raised to N. Our goal now is to find a pattern or a formula that relates S with subscript N to terms like S with subscript N plus 1 and S with subscript N plus 2. This method will help us build up to S with subscript 37 and so on without expanding powers every time. We know that A and B satisfy the quadratic equation, so their squares can be written in terms of themselves. That is, A squared equals minus root 6 times A minus 3, and B squared equals minus root 6 times B minus 3. Now, if Sn is A raised to N plus B raised to N, then Sn plus 1 becomes A raised to N plus 1 plus B raised to N plus 1. Similarly, Sn plus 2 becomes A raised to N plus 2 plus B raised to N plus 2. So, Sn plus 2 becomes A squared multiplied by A raised to N plus B squared multiplied by B raised to n. But since we already know how to express a squared and b squared, we substitute them using the earlier identity. So it becomes minus root 6 times a minus 3 multiplied by a raised to n plus minus root 6 times b minus 3 multiplied by b raised to n. Now distribute the multiplication and group-like terms. This gives minus root 6 multiplied by a raised to n plus 1 plus b raised to n plus 1 minus 3 multiplied by a raised to n plus b raised to n. That means sn plus 2 becomes minus root 6 times sn plus 1 minus 3 times sn. This way we have a clean recurrence relation. Without wasting further time, we can see that s0 equals a to the 0 plus b to the 0 or 1 plus 1 or 2. Then s of 1 equals a plus b, which is minus root 6. This is because sum of roots of the equation of form x squared plus px plus q equals 0 is negative p. So, for this equation, p is root 6, and hence the sum of the roots a plus b equals minus root 6. Now, let's compute s2 using this recurrence. Substitute S0 and S1 to get this, and we get S2 as 0. Then we can similarly compute S3 using S1 and S2 to get S3 equals 3 root 6. The value of our ratio will be S37 plus S26 divided by S29 
plus S 18. Again, we are in trouble, as I will not be calculating S 37 manually like this, because that's clearly not practical, and it will be super tedious. Now what? Should we abandon this question because we are stuck here? Or is there still a smarter way to tackle this using any other method? This is where we jump to level third order thinking where we will be using 100% of our brain. Remember, we calculated the values of A and B, and then we tried expanding the powers, but that quickly became overwhelming. You know what? We will still be expanding it, but there's a more efficient method we can use, which is using famous Euler's formula, which is E raised to I theta equals cos theta plus I sine theta. So first, we express both A and B in polar form. To do that, we begin by finding their magnitude. If we have a complex number Z of the form P plus IQ, then its modulus, or R, is given as square root of P, square plus Q, square, and its argument, or angle, or theta, is given as tan inverse Q over P. So we can rewrite same complex number z as r times e raised to i theta. This is called the polar form of the complex number. The modulus of both a and b equals root 6 over 2 times square root of minus 1 whole square plus 1 square, or root 6 over 2 times root 2, which turns out to be root 3. Then comes the angle. For a, the angle lies in the second quadrant because the real part is negative, and the imaginary part is positive. So we take tan inverse of 1 over minus 1, which gives us minus 1, and in the second quadrant, this corresponds to 3 pi by 4. Similarly, for b, we again take tan inverse of minus 1 over minus 1, which gives us a positive 1. And because this is in the third quadrant, this corresponds to 5 pi by 4, which we can also rewrite as 2 pi minus 3 pi by 4. With that, we now write a as root 3 times e raised to i times 3 pi by 4, and b as root 3 times e raised to i times 2 pi minus 3 pi by 4. So b becomes root 3 times e raised to i times 2 pi times e raised to minus i times 3 pi by 4 but e raised to i 2 pi equals cos 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi. Cos 2 pi equals 1, and sine 2 pi equals 0. Therefore, e raised to i 2 pi equals 1. So, b becomes root 3 times e raised to minus i times 3 pi by 4. Awesome! Now, a raised to n equals root 3 times e raised to i times 3 pi by 4 whole raised to n, which can be written as root 3 raised to n multiplied by e raised to i times 3 pi by 4 times n. Similarly, b raised to n becomes root 3 to the power n times e raised to minus i times 3n pi by 4. Now comes the sweet part. Add a raised to n and b raised to n, which gives us this. Take root 3 raised to n as common, and we get root 3 raised to n times this plus this. But hey, using Euler's formula, e raised to i theta plus e raised to minus i theta equals cos theta plus i sine theta plus cos of minus theta plus i times sine of minus theta. But cos of minus theta equals cos theta, and sine of minus theta equals minus sine of theta. Wow, sine theta gets cancelled out, and we are left with 2 times cos theta. So, this addition will become 2 times root 3 to the power n times cos of 3n pi by 4. This way, we have a beautiful compact formula for s with subscript n. So now, we can find the value of this ratio. Let's start with s, 37. This becomes 2 times root 3 raised to 37 times cos of 3 times 37 pi divided by 4. That means cos of 111 pi divided by 4. Now 111 divided by 4 is 27.75, 
which is 27 plus 3 fourth. So we write this as cos of 27 pi plus 3 pi by 4. We know that cos of n times pi plus theta equals minus 1 raised to power n times cos theta. So this will become minus 1 raised to 37 times cos of 3 times pi by 4. This will be minus 1, and cos of 3 times pi by 4 will be minus 1 over root 2. Thus this becomes plus 1 over root 2. So s 37 becomes 2 times root 3 raised to 37 times 1 over root 2. Both these will cancel, and in numerator we get root 2, and thus it becomes root 2 times root 3 raised to 37. Now let's compute s 26. It becomes 2 times root 3 raised to 26 times, cos of 3 times 26 pi divided by 4. That is cos of 78 pi divided by 4. 78 divided by 4 is 19.5, which is 19 pi plus pi by 2. Again, using this, we get this as minus 1 raised to 19 times cos of pi by 2. This becomes super easy because cos of pi by 2 equals 0. So s 26 becomes 0. We can similarly find the value of s 29, which becomes root 2 times root 3 raised to 29, and the value of s 18 becomes 0. So finally, the full ratio becomes root 2 times root 3 raised to 37 divided by root 2 times root 3 raised to 29. Both of them will be cancelled and using this power rule, this will become root 3 raised to 37 minus 29, or root 3 raised to 8. Root 3 is 3 raised to half, and thus it will be 3 raised to the power of 8 by 2, or 3 raised to 4. This gives us the final answer as 81, and that's it. What started off looking like a nightmare ended up being a clean, smart, and elegant solution. By the way, I have written a code to give us the value of Sn starting from n equals 1 to n equals 40 using recurrence relation, and then I computed the numerator and denominator to get the final ratio as 81, which is exactly the same as our value. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.